Hello, I'm Harley Wallen, and I am here to do a Q&A with my amazing team. Uh, we are filmmakers, actors, actresses, and uh, love to hear uh, some of the questions that you have coming at us. We have a few films coming out this year, so we're going to show you some trailers, and uh, hope they have a good time with us. We're a pretty entertaining bunch. Right? <laughs> that would be you. <laughs> Me? Yes. I am Nancy Ostwein. <laughs> I am a screenwriter and producer. Um, here in Michigan, and I also dabble in a little bit of special effects makeup, costume and order of design, and locations, and whatever other miracles people need me to work on a day-to-day -day basis. Cool. Um, my name is Calhoun Koenig. I am an actor here in Michigan. Um, and I don't know, I've helped out on the sound team a little bit, but acting's my main thing. I'm Katie Wallen. I am an actress producer, but I have dabbled in a few areas as well with whatever the team needs their help on, so, hello. <laughs> I'm Annette Sama, I'm a producer, executive producer, and whatever needs to be done behind the scenes, usually I'm bringing some meals and <laughs> making sure everybody uh, has what they need on set. Yeah, I think that's the big thing when you're in, uh, in the indie film world, we kind of have to wear a lot of hats. True. So, uh, we're releasing five films this year, which is insane. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it's going to be pretty hectic. So I think the first thing we're going to do right out of the gate is the next film coming out is going to be hitting uh, in August. I don't have a, an official date for it yet, but it's called Abstruse. And, uh, and here's the trailer. You know, sometimes in life, a man's got to stand up for that man. He can't stand up for himself, no matter what the consequences. Please, please help me. Are you okay? Oh my, God. What happened? my friend! They killed my friend! Are you absolutely certain that the purpose that you saw? Did you kill him with his girlfriend? Are you serious? I know. What'd you do to her? All right, so that was the trailer for Abstruse. Uh, we actually f shot that film almost two almost years two. ago. Uh, almost. Yeah, two years ago. Two years ago, was mm -hmm. it? No, mm -hmm. we shot it in uh, it? April, May. April, May. Mm -hmm. Was it April, May? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so two oh, yeah, years ago. Two years ago. Yeah, so that was a wild ride. Uh, yeah. Probably recognized Tom Sizemore yeah. in that film. Incredibly talented actor. Uh, Dennis Haskins was in that as well, uh, our Saved by the Bell uh, hero. He's been with us a million times now, I feel. Yeah. I think he is <laughs> actually the one out of our Hollywood talent that has been in the most. I think so. Dennis? Mm -hmm. Three or four, four mm -hmm. films, I think. Yeah. Um, he's a great actor. I think he's, yes. uh, there's a lot of folks that don't realize what a great dramatic actor mm -hmm. he is. He's one of those people that I think kind of gets uh, typecast in a way and oh, um, yeah. and he uh, in this film in, in particular oh, yeah. he plays a very kind of well very dark character and he really yeah. uh, surprised I, I'd known him for a long time and he even you know kind of surprised me there were some moments that they're like okay yeah yeah he definitely delivers and yeah. uh, uh, Tom Sizemore was absolutely amazing yeah. yeah. Um, a blast to work with, um, mm -hmm. top notch, and uh, I'm excited to see this film come out. And we used Lake Orion yeah. as uh, yeah. our location mm -hmm. for a lot of our scenes. So um, tune in to Abstruse when it comes out. Yeah, it, it's looking like we have a really good shot at getting this uh, in a very common place uh, to rent your film. So this should be very easily and readily available uh, very, very soon. Uh, so uh, make sure that you keep your eyes out for abstruse. Um, anybody want to talk about anything in particular? Did you want to ask a question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do have a question. Um, 
It's taken you, well, you said, almost three years before this film is actually going to be viewed. It'll be, it'll be two. Two years? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now, is it going to be in local theaters, or is this online streaming, or how is that, how is it shown? Okay, so the one thing that we know for sure, because a lot of this is actually not up to us, so we, we make the film, and then after we make the film, we shop the film to different distributors. In this case, uh, Green Apple is our distributor. Uh, they are pretty uh, uh, strong uh, uh, distributor internationally. Uh, they have a very good relationship with Showtime and Redbox. So those are the places that it will likely be. Uh, also, all films do a transactional start, whether it's in theaters or on video on demand, where you can rent the films uh, on Amazon Prime or on your Xfinity or uh, whatever you know, your subscriber services. So, so we don't decide that, but it will for sure be on all the subscriber services, and then pending that, um, you know, it'll go all kinds of other places. So that's that. We don't decide that part, though. Okay, thank you. You got it. And how do you decide, uh, or where do you find the subject matter for your films? Uh, this film, in particular, I kind of like to, to say this: that this this whole film I wrote based on an actor. Uh, the actor that plays the the serial killer, mm -hmm. uh, he auditioned for a film before called Enigma that's actually coming out September this year. And uh, <laughs> he had an amazing audition and we almost gave him the role f as the, the bad guy in that film, but he wasn't the greatest fit uh, for that one and the juggling of cast would have actually weighed the film down in our opinion. So I wrote that script based on his audition for the film we did prior, which is kind of, kind of wild. And he kills it. Oh yeah, he's so <laughs> he good. Amazing job. He so good. is amazing. So it's interesting, we, we've been making films for a little over three years, um, and there are a lot of uh, new filmmakers that make the mistake of jumping at the first offer that comes along. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We really took the time to figure out who the good distributors were to mm -hmm. do our homework and, and research and not jump until we knew we had people that were really going to represent the film well and mm -hmm. get it into places where um, uh, where it was going to be seen. So that's why we have five films coming out this year yeah. because some of those, those five films that we have coming out, some of those were made two years ago and one year ago and, mm -hmm. and one of them we wrapped a couple of months ago. So mm -hmm. um, so that's why they're kind of stacking up. And we also have three films um, out right now um, mm -hmm. that uh, have been out for the last year, but they're available on Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. Voodoo, uh, Voodoo um, several other VOD yeah. outlets. But mm -hmm. um, you can catch those on there, Betrayed, um, mm -hmm. and Moving Parts, and Bennett Song. Um, all three very different movies. Very, very different. different. Um, and yeah. all three can be ordered. Um, you can order the DVD still, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can still order the DVDs yeah, as DVDs, well. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Betrayed is uh, um, has this stellar uh, stellar cast. Yeah, it's an ensemble. Um, I mean, yeah. it really is. Yeah, um, we loved uh, loved work. I don't know if you want to talk more about. Yeah, we have John Savage from Deer Hunter and you know, hair and yeah. a million other amazing films, The Thin Red Line, I think, is yeah. probably mm -hmm. one of his right. better ones as right. well. Um, we had uh, Richard Tyson in, who is, I mean, he's an amazing villain. Um, uh, uh, and surprisingly he surprisingly hilarious. And I hope oh, he is, he is, a, he is <laughs> class clown still, still to this day, yeah. uh, and, and, and quite amazing. We had Billy Worth from uh, Body Snatchers and from uh, Lost The Lost Boys, Boys nice. and makes all the girls go weak in the knees still. Yeah. Um, and then we <laughs> had- Super uh, sweet. Huh? Super sweet guy. Uh, amazing guys. Yeah, and the funny thing is we've heard so many people talk about like Hollywood talent as if they, walked around uh, you know on on air yeah, and and and, mm -hmm. and uh, they had all these wild requests and it, it, we haven't really we had haven't any had issues like we've had really good people mm -hmm. to work with and and they're a Definitely lot like been us blast. Definitely I, yeah. I think blast. I think part of that is that I won't say who but we did have one particular actor that we brought in that we had heard we'd had some people give us a, a few warnings about um, and I think that was simply because they it was a set where they didn't run a tight ship um, and we try to have 
what we call a culture of kindness and a really fun set. Um, but we also do our homework. We spend a lot of time in pre-production. We try to make the right casting decisions. Uh, we try to dot all our I's and cross all our T's and make sure that we have a very professional experience, but a very, a very comfortable and a very fun one too. Mm -hmm. So I think that Everybody that's come in, I think, pretty much has wanted to work with us again. Yeah. Yes. Um, and calls yes. us up asking when they can come back. And yes. that's one of the things that's been... And getting disappointed when they when can't... When they run. don't. Right. Yeah. And which one of the reasons we've been able to get so much great Hollywood talent, because it's not as easy as people think. That's a question that we get asked by a lot of other filmmakers in Michigan, is like, how are you getting how all do you these get people? Them? Mm -hmm. Right. Because um, I call up and it's like nobody even calls me back. It's not as simple as just looking up online and saying, oh, this person is represented by... CAA, I'm gonna call up <laughs> CAA and, and make them an offer and right. they're gonna come and do my movie. And it's like, CAA, you know, they're not even gonna return your phone call. No. You're not gonna get through the gatekeeper over there. No. Um, they're gonna check you out and they're gonna make sure that you know what you're doing and that you've had some films that have had some success or that you've got people involved with your team mm -hmm. that are good. Um, so a lot of the ways that we've been doing this is that we work with Word somebody, mm -hmm. they love working with us, and then- Then they go back and tell they everybody. They go back and they tell their friends and then they're saying, yeah. hey, by the way, you know, I'm also friends with, right. you know, I'm friends with Jake Busey. I'm friends with, you mm -hmm. know, with Scout Taylor yeah. Compton. I'm friends with these other people. And, and they'd really love to do a movie with you guys sometime, too. And then we all of a sudden were, I you know, we're working with those people. So. I yeah. think that was really clear. Uh, back to Betrayed, we had a, a Hollywood screening uh, at the Chinese Theater of Betrayed. And uh, it was a kind of like we were all Cinderella for a night right. yeah. and uh, right. and and you and you woke up the next day and you couldn't quite believe it and I talked to the uh, to the to the movie theater manager and uh, she came up and she goes what what film is this and I'm like it's betrayed remember we were here we test screened it and, and she's like yeah yeah but like you you should have told me you were gonna have this many celebrities come because we don't see this all the time anymore um, I would have loved to have my photographer here uh, can you guys get us photos and that was like a reality check to me saying that we are mm -hmm. doing something really really special because we had I mean the red carpet was yeah it it, did, it was didn't feel like a Michigan movie uh, that's no. for sure no it didn't and mm -hmm. and the amount of people that are working in LA that were were there took mm -hmm. the time to actually come, yeah. mm -hmm. um, which we were so blessed. There were so many people. Tara Reid showed up, um, Scout, not even her film, Jake Busey. Right, e exactly. Mm -hmm. Coming up to us and saying, you guys have no idea what kind of buzz you're making out here. Mm -hmm. You're doing something right. Yeah. And uh, so that's, you know, great feedback, yeah. great mm -hmm. feedback. So having people wanting to work with us is um, definitely, definitely what it's about. So yeah. definitely blessed. Yeah, for great sure. Great team. So, um, and then uh, Moving Parts is the, f well, it's the first film mm -hmm. we made together mm -hmm. as, a, as a team. You had mm -hmm. done one feature film. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of worked on that one a little yeah. bit, a little bit yeah. too. Um, but, uh, uh, but Moving Parts is, um, I s love that script. It was, it's so, yeah. it's, it's got so many twists and turns. Nobody and has guessed the ending, I yeah. challenge you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if and you can <laughs> guess the ending. And Katie's role, she just kills it. Oh. Um, and uh, it's it's a it's a real it's a real thrill ride. It's yeah. really it's really exciting, and I love uh, I love her role in that. It's yeah. still yeah. to date, mm -hmm. it's one of your favorite roles. I think I that love you that the whole film is just special. Played. Yeah, that and it's really we, special. you know I, it's funny. I look at that film now, and I will say, I it's it's so worth watching because the script is so yeah. strong, the performances are also strong. Mm -hmm. I see it now, and I will say, mm -hmm. there are moments that you look at and you go, yeah, okay, you can tell this is yeah. an independent film. Mm -hmm. Like there's like our production values are not anywhere near what we're doing now. Yeah. Like we don't have the same level of, you know, of like, you know, camera and lighting and sound yeah. and all mm -hmm. the stuff that we're that we're doing now. Mm -hmm. So it it definitely has that feel, but this the story and the performances the and everything yeah. are so strong mm -hmm. that that one is is definitely definitely worth worth watching. Um, but that one we made Three years ago, yeah, we s we uh, started that one this time three years ago, which is mm -hmm. seems crazy to me. And that one's mm -hmm. still going out there. Mm -hmm. And then um, Bennett Song is a family film, um, very first my first my first screenplay, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it is a romantic comedy family film um, that is very timely celebration of uh, of diversity. That uh, was a real labor of love. Mm -hmm. Um, to make. Yeah, and the, what's so cool about Bennett's song mm -hmm. was they can't define it. 
and that was one of my favorite <laughs> things. We, we sent it to film festivals, and the film festivals, we won best romance, best family film, best feature film. They, they couldn't decide what we were, mm -hmm. and that was one of my favorite things because people look at me and they say, so you did a horror film, <laughs> you did the thriller, you did the action, and you did and, and they have a hard time with that. And, uh, and I, I always say that there's somebody with the last name Rodriguez, who's a pretty famous director who did uh, uh, was, uh, the adventures of uh, Shark Boy and Lava, Lava, Lava Girl. Girl. Yeah. And, and he also does very dark yeah. uh, features. So, so I think <laughs> you don't have to be doing it in the same genre or similar genre all the time. I think if you find a terrific story and, uh, and a great script, um, that that can drive you mm -hmm. all the way there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where do you find find the scripts uh, if you're not writing your screenplay yourself? Um, so far, they've all come from. Yeah, we've written all of them. Both of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we have between the two of us. A, if we just did from yeah. us, we've got enough to get us through the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah, we, we yeah. have, we have scripts got, sitting yeah. and waiting. Yeah. Uh, we will actually produce our first script not written by one of us right. next. Mm -hmm. uh, so that will be somebody that we, uh, we, we were gonna shoot a film right now and felt that we couldn't come together and get everything we needed to do it justice. And um, I think we had an idea, or I had an idea of what we could do instead uh, and I didn't have the time to write it, so I went to a, a really strong screenwriter who's worked with us, uh, Brett Miller. He, he's been an AD with us um, from Michigan. You know, from Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. And uh, and 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 asked him to write this, and I gave him a really vague outline. And and I remember the first draft coming across, and I read it, and I'm like, goodness Lord, this is I good. know it. Yeah. I know this it. This is very scary. The next yeah. one we're doing is will be by far our scariest film. Scary to read. <laughs> scary to read, even yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it is. It is. Uh, I, I when I film. told him the original uh, feel that I wanted, I said, "Think Texas Chainsaw Massacre meets House of Wax." So yeah, it's it's mm. pretty dark. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And since I dabble in special effects, makeup on some of her stuff, I get really excited whenever we get to do stuff like this. Cause yeah, like the trade, I got to do like a full body autopsy and I got to chop off somebody's fingers and get their fingernails pulled out. That was really fun for me. And I'm not a violent person. That's the funny thing is, it's like I, when we have like guns on set and stuff like that, I'm just like, like, because I, I handle all of our prop stuff too and I'm just like, here, somebody take this for me. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> like I'm not, I don't, and I don't like really violent movies mm. generally as a rule, but, but the special effects makeup to me is art. So it's like to make something mm. and then have it look real and stuff like that. It's like, it's, yeah. it's cool, so. That makes everybody, stuff. even in the theatrical we did when they were doing the torture scene, yeah. people were cringing and couldn't watch. I, I yeah. loved watching that. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, That's pretty fun. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> and Blanca Blanco is also in Betrayed. Blanca mm -hmm. Blanco, yeah. TJ Storm. And TJ Storm. Um, um, so Sean Ray. And mm -hmm. Sean Ray. Um, Brought in Damien should from, from Boston. Damien from Boston came in. Sean's from um, Toronto. Toronto. And uh, who else did we have? I think that, that covers it, right? As far as in our trade, yeah. ensemble cla yeah. cast that we had. Oh, Jan, oh, Jan Birch. Birch. Yeah. Yeah. And Jan Birch. Yeah. So. Jan, is it, uh, Jan and Dennis yeah, were Jan in almost yeah. everything we do. Right. And they're, they're, they should almost be on stage with us. They're, right. they're family at this mm -hmm. point. Right. Right. Good people. Yeah. 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 Very. So Moving Parts is, um, do we have a, a trailer for yeah. Moving Parts? Yeah. So this here is already out. Well, we're just about to get started, so why don't you guys find a seat. What do you want? Oh, I want everything. I already told you, boss. I don't have the money. Someone took it. I don't care. I can get the money. It'll just take some time. Okay? You have one week. Yeah, I do feel like we're disconnected comes home late. He's on his phone constantly. He's moody. So, hey, what'd you find out on Kevin Hedding? Dude looks like a straight-up guy from India. I followed your husband last night, and he was not meeting up with anyone. And the guys he met with are not from his bowling room. We have to get this handled down. Okay, it's no joke out there. 
you're not on high alert, you come home in a body bag. You just can't shoot people. Be careful. All kinds of trouble following this one. Locked and ready to drop. Got you back. I'm risking my life every day out there. Hey, Angela. They mean bad business. I think it's time to pay the visit. Go to his house. Check it out. Where's my money? I don't know. Kevin had your money. Okay. Do anything stupid now. Come on, do it. Oh, boy. I love that trailer. Uh, we actually had a, a new editor, and he. Uh, how do I do that? Uh, we have a, a new editor who actually cut that trailer seven months, eight months after the film was released, and I love it. I, I mm -hmm. sent it to the distributor and said, "You got to exchange the trailer we have for this one because this one feels like the film so much more." Mm -hmm. um, that's another thing that uh, we, we're always trying to improve. improve. We're always trying to find the next edge to take things to the next level, whether that is. Uh, you know, we, we do a lot of work with the Lake Orion Police Department. Uh, so, so Jerry Narsh and the and, and the and the guys from there, mm -hmm. they have been in multiple of our films. Right. Mm -hmm. um, right. uh, so we, we try to find ways to make the movie look a lot more like the Hollywood films that you see on the big screen, and and getting real police cars and and getting Shout great out locations. To Brian. Oh yeah, Brian. Brian Martinez. Martinez has been amazing to yeah. us, mm -hmm. J as well as Jerry and. Yeah. Um, uh, and this, you know, which brings me to another point too, um, both the Lake Orion community and um, the other surrounding communities, people have really gotten behind what we've done. And um, we all have, in addition to this, we have serious business backgrounds before we really started doing this. Um, and we've made really smart decisions about how we're making films, how we're getting them out there. Um, but people in the community have really invested in what we're, in what we're doing, and, and a lot of people in this community have, have invested in multiple films financially yeah. with what we're doing too, and we're always looking for new people. And the nice part about this is that because we are all wearing many hats, um, we, yeah. you know, we're not hiring like fifth, like you know, we go to, she did an episode recently of uh, Guest Start on Law and Order SVU, and one of the things she asked about, she's like, how come we don't do this when, you know, something, <laughs> something that they did in her dressing room is like, how come we don't do this? And I said, well, you see that person there and that person and that person, that person, half of that person, two people back at the office, they all do my job. <laughs> and we don't, we don't spend all of those resources mm -hmm. on that. We borrow bag anywhere that we can. Yeah. Um, you know, and we people are excited people's houses to be a part. People are excited mm -hmm. to be a part yeah. of it. We get, you know, it's like, so um, because of that, we make really smart decisions about how we're spending yeah. money. And when we did our day, when we did our premiere out in, in LA, oh, yeah. literally we had, we had somebody <laughs> that came up to Harley and it was just like, you made, you made that movie for under a million dollars, I can tell. And it's like, you know, you don't want to tell them and it's like mm -hmm. that it was just like, Way <laughs> like like yeah you're right you're you caught us you caught us but we're making really smart decisions and we have investors that have come on to our films mm. for as little as twenty five hundred and five thousand mm. dollars and so this is something that you know you can get involved in like you yeah. can you can be a part of making movies um, and like so this isn't something where you're just you know throwing money at something that isn't going to get seen, that isn't going to get distributed, that isn't, you know, you can, this I, is a I sound had, investment. I had a couple of investors that were at the premiere uh, for Betrayed, and they said, in all honesty, if this is all I get, that was awesome. I'd never had anything <laughs> like that. And then they calmed down and like, but, 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 but anyways, but I, you know, <laughs> they don't really mean it, but it is. It is an amazing <laughs> thing to be a part of, and, and we try to be very inclusive. So yes. the yes. premieres and everything else, we invite everybody. everybody. They, uh, they get to be part a part, get to come on set, mm -hmm. get to, to, to hang out, get some pictures, and, and, and get the full experience. And we try to be a family and a, and a community ourselves, too. So mm -hmm. I think that helps a lot. And you mentioned, you mentioned business background. Hmm? You mentioned oh, business something background. about locations. Locations. Oh, locations. Yeah, yes. that's it. Oh, somebody uh, asked us a question about locations. Yeah. Where do we Love. find the awesome locations? Um, that would be my department. And uh, um, uh, I'm always amazed sometimes with, <laughs> with some of the things that people say yes to. We had um, 
uh, this amazing mansion that we were shooting at when Scout Taylor Compton and Billy Worth were here mm -hmm. um, last year. And they were talking about if they were shooting in LA, um, they were asking me like, well, how much did you get that for? Because mm -hmm. they said, if you were shooting that in LA, after you paid your permit costs and you pulled mm -hmm. your permits, mm -hmm. that place would probably cost you about $10,000 a day. And I'm, I said, um, zero. <laughs> they didn't charge me anything. And they're like, what? People love to be a part. Yeah, right. that's, that's, that's that exactly we don't, it. There are some locations that we do have some we budget had a, for. Like in mm -hmm. the trade, we had yeah. a we, we had a bar for two months. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. one yeah, cost that one, that one cost the money. Yeah. Uh, there's no way around right. it. But yeah. uh, right. but absolutely, the we loved bringing people on. We love having yeah. people be a part. Uh, we follow Painted a, Creek um, oh, for um, ca for casting calls for extras. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, PAs. PAs. Uh, a lot of people come on board as PAs mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So definitely lots and lots of ways you can be a part of what we do and and, uh, and uh, we like being a part of, of where we film and, and primarily we're in Lake Orion, Pontiac, mm -hmm. Rochester, that's kind yeah. of like our sweet spot. Uh, we've definitely been in, we've been in Warren, we've been in Clarkston, Clarkston. Mm -hmm. we've been in uh, Lincoln Park, Park, Park. Detroit. Detroit, Detroit, Detroit a lot. Yeah. Detroit. Mm -hmm. We haven't shot in Detroit for Not a little a while, yeah. but, we, but for uh, yeah. Abstruse was shot mm -hmm. almost exclusively yeah. in Detroit. That Detroit can be a little bit trickier. We can't do a lot of exterior stuff, um, yeah. just sometimes because of safety issues. Mm -hmm. It depends on the type of scene that mm -hmm. you're doing, mm -hmm. um, but uh, there are certain areas where, like you can't, yeah. um, yeah. you know, if you you, I mean, you can't do anything with like whether it's fake weapons or real weapons, yeah. like anything mm -hmm. like that. With you know, mm -hmm. there's certain things you can't do, but. Um, but I've, you know, I've found that there are certain areas where people are like really, really helpful and, mm -hmm. you know, and there's sometimes when you walk in and you think it's gonna be easy and somebody's like, absolutely not, I'm not interested mm -hmm. in any price. And then other people are like, yeah, what do you need? Like, yeah, can we, you know, it's like, we have, we have one house that we've shot at several times that they usually like open up several bottles of wine, <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah, this is awesome. They want it, they ask if they can invite friends over to watch. <laughs> I think when the biggest. <laughs> I think the biggest location one was is her childhood home though, that oh, we that were was at crazy. forever. Yeah. We we uh, yeah. we'll show the trailer to to Bennett song. To Bennett song. But um, nine yeah, days. Nine days. Nine days of filming at their we, house. And, and and in that film, which you'll see soon, um, I play a, a widower with seven kids, who meets uh, a divorced woman with seven kids. So we have you know. 14 combined yeah. then with me and her living there and gra my, my dad and, and her mom it's uh, we took over that place and yeah. uh, and all of the kids are all adopted from different countries and cultures mm -hmm. we should show yeah. the trailer so that way they get a feel for it I love this this is uh, song yeah Bennett song available Hi. everywhere I'm Dr. Song call me out Maybe we could do coffee sometime? I'd love to sometime get coffee, sure. I haven't done this dating thing in a long time. You thought this was a date? Now I have a daughter named Pearl. Did I tell you she's from China? Did I tell you Janice is adopted? She said you asked out her dentist, and you were stuttering the whole time. Really, Dad? You're dating. Yeah. How, how many of them are you? All of them. I don't want to date you, Susan. Oh, you don't. I want to marry you. No, really, they're, they're all ours. You're kidding. 14? 14. Well, what are you here for? <laughs> Witness for a defense man. And you? If they wanted to mess with my little sister, they were going to have to go through me. I don't see a problem with that. Words are not fists. No. Sometimes they hit a lot harder. Some black kid comes out of nowhere claiming to be your sister, and then this oriental girl starts yelling bad words. There is a noise ordinance, and the sound's coming out of the garage far exceeds that. Sounds like I'm gonna have to put a muffler on my lawnmower. I didn't marry your mother and end up with the rest of you guys in the barn. I love you, Pearl, including your stubbornness. We 
you stop letting the dog lick milk from your mouth? But she likes it! Dude, that's nasty! <laughs> Whoa, I got a good one. This is like mining for diamond armor, but smellier. Oh, Theo, no, 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 no. Why do we have kitty litter? <laughs> and I don't suppose either of you know how we ended up with a dead frog in the washing machine? Oh, no. Bob is... No, definitely not. We have no knowledge of this frog. Yep. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I steer, still tear up when I see that. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely a feel-good movie, and uh, it looks it looks it from the trailer. Yeah. yeah, that was the the roughest rap I think we've ever had. Oh my yeah. God, there were a lot. When, Everybody when that was film singing was and over. tears, and because mm -hmm. we had um, the scene where they were all kind of squaring off in the trailer, which actually ended up not, not making, making it the, the final yeah. cut of the film. <laughs> we were shooting that on the last day of filming. And then we had like one night scene to do there, but that was like the last scene that all the kids filmed together. And um, one of the things that you don't see in the trailer, because there was just not a way to include it in there, is there's a, there's a lot of original music mm -hmm. in there. Um, her character is the lead singer of a band, and um, there's this really powerful song that's kind of a, in a climax scene of the film. Mm -hmm. And so at the rap party, all the kids were like, all standing together in a circle around Harley and I, mm -hmm. um, singing the singing this song, and um, they surprised us with some stuff, and it was just like yeah. the waterworks the, the whole yeah. time. And then our neighbors called the police. You're right. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, we've had a, that happens too. That's, that's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> we don't film at my house anymore. <laughs> Unless it's uh, oh, public gosh. service. Oh gosh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, that was uh, it was a great it was a great uh, experience, especially with us making a fair amount of darker films, thrillers, and action and and whatnot to 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 do that and and to f to have that vibe on set. It transfers right. over to and we have a sequel else. of Bennett's song. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. we just Her wrapped the holiday uh, film Bennett song holiday middle of January, and that's going to come out this fall. Mm -hmm. Also, so we don't have a date on that yet, or but. Yeah. Um, that was a lot of fun. And Corbin Burnson came out for that. <laughs> oh, which he's so good. Being women of a certain age, we were particularly excited. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, LA Free Law fan. LA. Yes. Never, <laughs> missed, never missed an episode. Arnie Becker. So, yeah. <laughs> and he was hilarious. Mm -hmm. He was, he oh, was, he was. just oh, super, super, super guy. Gracious. Yeah. yeah. Just very personable. And, and talented. Yeah. Yeah. Very like, talented. Yeah. Very talented. And you know what I love more than anything else is when th these people have been at the peak, and, and, and they've been in the biggest limelight you can possibly imagine. And then they come here and they work hard. Right. They give it all they got and, and they really dig into their character and, 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 and they're just willing to, to go there as, 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 as an actor. I, th I, I love seeing that. That's really special to me to see that they care that much still. Uh, we're bringing Scout back. Uh, since we're talking about Scout Taylor Compton, from Halloween 1 and 2 with Rob Zombie uh, and, and a slew of other films. She's like a big, big, big name. And she comes out and she, uh, in, in Abeyance, Abeyance. Yeah. which will be out also this September. September. So <laughs> we're going to have a <laughs> very, very busy yeah. August, September. But in that film, her role was pretty demanding and, uh, and mm -hmm. she has to wear some mask for a fair amount of it. And a lot of Hollywood talent, you'd assume that they want their face to be seen and they want to be this. She came out and, and she's a force to be reckoned with, mm -hmm. reckon with and, and very physical as an actor. That was something mm -hmm. that I, I think I was mostly impressed by. She, you can she see got she's into an it. athlete. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, she was, she was in it. And, and, and that's what we've seen from so many coming out. And that's what blows my mind. So do we want to take a look at it? Sure. sure. <laughs> Showing a lot of trailers. All right, let's see. If you ever want to see your daughter again, shut up. My parents. Oh. My parents. Oh. 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 Oh.
I need you to follow the rules without question. That's why there is five million dollars in it for you and your boys. Deal. We're the lead research company transplanting human heads. We're breaking so many laws right now, Oliver. I'm still awaiting the hands on human trials. All I can say is get it done. But you don't have to take this stand. It doesn't have to be a fight. We know that they're selling this technology to the highest bidder. This whole thing is too big for us. Now the richest of the rich have their fountain of you. We started this company. And I'm here. These are some of the most powerful people in the world. And she's about to spoil their attempt at life everlasting. Not only should we continue to do this, but we must continue to do this. We have to. Yeah, super excited about that one too. There are so many amazing performances in that film as well. And I love the subject matter too. Uh, I read a post on Facebook, uh, Italian doctor, I guess, uh, going to China to perform a surgery of decapitating a live human being uh, that has, uh, uh, one of them is brain dead and the other one has a, a, a body not working and they're switching these heads. Yeah. And he has already done this on deceased primates successfully, where they have been able to regrow connections. And I thought that was such a wild thing. And, and I thought to myself, you know, what are we going to do when we can actually do this? Because we're not that far removed uh, right. from being able to do crazy things mm -hmm. um, and us all being half robots. So I already know which body I'm going to pick out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Right. You have yours? I have, I have, all right. I have a few in mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, it's not creepy at all. Yeah. No. <laughs> and I'm right behind you. <laughs> yeah, so the, the premise of this is that we've now gone one step further. We have now been able to download your consciousness and essentially you, and you can now plug that into the brainstem of a new body and have that be um, hosted. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, very wild story, but I, I, I love moral dilemmas uh, because I think that's very interesting because we all want to be good people and not do bad things, but when you're presented with the option of having something, we have tendencies as humans to do it, which is why we've had so many crazy things happen in our world is that we are still flawed with that selfish need and, and, and wanting to consume. Um, so if you really dig in, you look at moving parts, has a detective who's really driving the story about his, his selfishness gets him into all these problems. And then to get out of the problems, he has to create a new problem. And, and that's one of the things that we see all the way through. And I, I love those moral dilemmas because we, we, we wrestle with them all the time. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's something that we as humanity should think about. Um, just because we can doesn't mean we should. And I think that's important too. Yeah. Anybody have any acting qu questions? We have two award-winning actresses here too, so. Yeah. Totally, uh, uh, if you have any questions or thoughts on, on acting and the process of that. Uh, as somebody who started acting myself, I, I, I still find it fascinating. I still love asking people their process and how they do and how they go through and, and how they get there and how they memorize, because like, it's, it's not like one size fits all at all. Mm -mm. I bet you we could probably ask how you guys do it. Like, how do you give, do it? Give, me your, give me your quick, like, uh, point Can you hear your secrets? Your yeah. Tell your secrets. Well, yeah. <laughs> secrets are I mean, me personally, I'm, I, I'm very, I approach characters from a very psychological angle to begin with, for the most part, like for Agramon's Gate, which I played a demon, which was very physical. Um, I, I really struggled with that, so I had to build the physicality first. Mm -hmm. But a lot, of the, a lot of the time when I get a character, I, I have the words on the page and then I have to fill in all of the blanks. And once I build that headspace, 
usually I just live within that and the physicality comes. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, when it comes to actual things that I do, I like to journal a lot as the character. Um, like I remember for Pearl, um, I in would- In Bennett's song. In, in Bennett's song, sorry, my character in Bennett's song. Um, I, I had like at least 20 journal entries of just like, oh, so I'm sitting as Pearl. What did I do today? You know, it's like, what did I eat? Like mm -hmm. this tiniest little things mm -hmm. that add tiny little nuances in, in scenes. Um, I like to label those. So that's just kind of how I do it. Mm -hmm. but I, I, I follow a very similar approach, so that's kind of that's kind of nice. Yeah. Um, with me, though, what I try to do is find, like, all right, so it's a Friday night as uh, Angela. What, what would she be doing right now? Oh, she'll be drinking a glass of wine. What kind of wine? All right, a red, right? So we go over, grab a glass of wine. What would I be listening to? Um, kind of really put yourself in that place, in that moment, to feel what she's feeling and how she approaches, like, life, you yeah. know? It's, and then journaling in those moments. Um, her favorite color, you know? Little things like that, because it kind of helps draw you. Uh, one thing that I have found that has helped me a lot is um, when you read through re reading through a script is like all right this person is very strong right here why is she strong what is what does she have in her that is you know reacting f to this um, because it kind of helps form the background and the background is so important um, because you don't realize how much those moments in between I, I keep and it's funny you say those the stuff in between, you kind of fill in the blanks, right? Mm -hmm. Every moment on screen matters, so you have to really keep yourself in that place and you have to have things to draw from to keep yourself in that place. So, yeah, it's an exciting experience stepping into it and being pulled out of it. It's really fun for me as an actor. I think what I've noticed is how much I learn about myself playing mm -hmm. others. Yes. I never expected that. Because hmm. yeah. I get to see myself from yes. the outside instead. And I get to make decisions as a different mm -hmm. person. And, and it, for it forces you to make connections yes. between yeah. yourself and the other, yeah. Yeah. It's a therapy. It is yeah. very <laughs> therapeutic. It's therapy with yourself. Very <laughs> therapeutic. <laughs> That's the thing. And yeah. finding lonely, the character can be incredibly frustrating and can be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You never mm -hmm. know. Uh, my worst experience is actually for the film we just did. So we just shot the sequel of uh, uh, Bennett's Song Holiday. <laughs> and <laughs> no, so, so, so I have never ever gone back to play a character oh, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh, true. yeah. yeah. Ever. That's yeah, and she really that struggled too. with that too. It yeah. was, I read the script and then I would say it and I felt like I was trying to be cold instead of being cold. <laughs> I was pulling my hair out of reading lines with Katie at night. Uh, uh, and we're trying to figure this thing out, mm -hmm. and, and I hated all of my preparation. And then I get on set, and we're and, and there we are. It's a family again. And I'm not it's trying to be cold yeah. anymore. I'm just cold. And it was just so wild how that worked, because yeah. I was like, why didn't I do that yesterday? <laughs> I was sitting there yesterday trying to 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 really get my lines right, and and I hate everything. And now suddenly I'm on set and. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it's just easy. It was a real struggle to write that. It was so much harder to write the sequel mm -hmm. than the first one because I had all these like amazing characters in mind and I let them kind of tell their stories and move through this and I kind of gave them the framework and then they kind of took the story in a certain direction. And then for the second one, I had certain things that I needed to accomplish mm -hmm. and I still wanted to stay true to this certain vision of having this strong, this really strong message and it, I was, it was a real struggle, and as we, I mean, we were like mm -hmm. up against the wire oh, on yeah. time on that, in part because I was just like, it took me forever to finally get pen to paper, and then it just like... Well, then it went fast. And then it went fast, thank God. No <laughs> 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 trouble. Yeah, we already booked everything. Started, right? If it hadn't finally started uh, it's coming. But one of the things I was most impressed with, um, just kind of watching um, some of the, the preparation, um, Chris Riley was talking to, um, giving her some great advice when mm, she was struggling yeah. with this whole demon thing. She was yeah. talking about like, as a understanding, as a you know, a sixteen-year-old girl, like what At your motivations time, like are, 15. or fifteen, yeah, understanding what the motivations of a demon are. <laughs> and he said, think about um, when you swat a mosquito. 
Um, and what do you do sometimes? You see this mosquito is flying around and you, it's buzzing and you, and you hit it and you look to see if you got it. And you get this certain little bit of satisfaction when you mm -hmm. see this squashed, bloody mm -hmm. carcass on your hand. <laughs> Because it's a, because in your head, like, even though you're not a violent person, you're not a mean person, mm -hmm. um, but it's this, uh, it's a lower form. Mm -hmm. It's beneath you. Mm -hmm. And, and that really, that's something that, that definitely she broke worked on, it broke down a wall least, for yeah. her. It's like as a demon, mm -hmm. all of those other people are these lower beings. They are beneath you. It's like, I'm doing y'all a take, favor. Like, yeah, they, don't, like, they don't deserve space like, or time like, here. Think about it like you're slapping them like a yeah. mosquito. And then like, you know, when you're eating that hard, it's just like, look at that blood. That's cool. Like, I did that, <laughs> yeah. you know? And it's like, you know, yeah, I got you. <laughs> you know, so it's, it, that really helped her. But one of the things I was impressed with, with um, when she was prepping for Pearl, there's a scene in Bennett's song really briefly where he walks into the room that little heartfelt scene between mm -hmm. the two of them I don't even remember the scene um, <laughs> when she it's when he first walks in I asked her one day what she was uh, you know what she was doing sitting there like I thought she was journaling as the character and she's like writing the term paper and I was oh, just yeah. like do you have a term paper due in the middle of the summer because <laughs> we shot mm -hmm. that scene in the, we shot that film in the summer and uh, she was like no the for the 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 term paper on DNA in the film, and I was like, you're writing the term paper? <laughs> she did. Nature versus nurture. Yeah. She, yeah, so there's a scene where it's like, literally he walks in the room and she's writing a term paper. No part of, like they discuss the term paper for like maybe two lines, and then they get on to what the conversation is supposed to be, mm -hmm. be about. But she actually researched and wrote the term paper and had all of her handwritten notes mm -hmm. specifically so, about that and researched her own background and her own heritage um, to, b to prep for that yeah. to prep for that scene which I thought was really cool yeah because if I looked down and I saw like random doodles it would have been like whoa it would have yeah, thrown me out of the scene so I had to in a way mm -hmm. yeah. to make it more tangible for huh. myself yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people think of acting as pretending and it's so far from that mm. it's so far from that and so the demon film, film that Callie was best in. Best poster yet. Um, best poster oh. yet by far. <laughs> Agramon's <laughs> Gate. That's a spook. Oh, and yeah. that's going to be released in August, September, I believe. August, I September. Yeah. Something I like that. I know they want to have that run for for Halloween. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be out just before. But can I, we show the poster? I, uh, I, don't oh, we to, I know we can show the trailer. Yeah, let's show the yeah, trailer first. Trailer. Okay. <laughs> Things are about to get interesting. Can we talk to family members? We can do a seance. I'm honestly not a big fan of this kind of thing. Spirit or spirit, we are here to see family and friends. We will also daddy. That's you. Shh. Your father, was he a bad man? You could say that. He tried to kill my mom and me. One night when he was strangling her, and I shot him with his own gun. She's been in a mental institution ever since. <laughs> What was that? Something pushed through. Like a spirit? What was that? This didn't just happen to Richie. This happened to all of us. <laughs> You're all gonna die! Whatever it was, it was stronger than anything I've ever felt before. He is him! Who is he? I think I know who it is. You trust me when I say this. His soul is up for grabs. His name is... Oh, my God! Hi, ah. Grandma. <laughs> you all right? Look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one is not a comedy. No, <laughs> no, no, it's not. No. I... I what I really like about that film, uh, we actually, this will be screening at the uh, Motor City Nightmares at the Novi uh, Sheraton um, as a Michigan made finalist mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. for the festival. So that's gonna be pretty cool. It's our second year in a row. The first film we showed, Abstruse Trailer, was also a screening finalist there uh, last year. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And that's in a couple of weeks. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, if anybody who really likes, uh, especially if you're a horror fan, uh, to have a, that big of a festival in Michigan, uh, and I think it's a little bit under the radar, but they have uh, great uh, horror film actors signing and, and they have a whole little expo inside of there with all kinds of fun stuff. Um, so that's a place that I would recommend going, even not just for mm -hmm. our film, but just that's a cool thing to check out. It's almost like a Comic Con uh, inside of I'm there. I'm looking forward to going. We have some friends that have yeah. films screening there that I haven't gotten to see there too. Some other Michigan-made yeah. filmmakers that uh, that have yeah. some stuff. I'm really looking forward to my soul to keep and some other stuff too. Yeah. So, um, and also coming up in the next couple of weeks are the uh, Eclipse Awards, which is uh, a big Grand uh, Rapids. Um, yeah. in Grand Rapids on May 1st. Um, big deal in Michigan, and we have. Uh, Agramon's Gate, um, <laughs> uh, Betrayed, 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 and Venison, Venison. Song are all nominated for Best <laughs> Feature Film <laughs> in Michigan. Um, I think we're going to win. I think we so. We could. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely could. <laughs> it's likely. I think it's a good possibility. The three films you've got to go to. <laughs> right? yeah. And Harley is, is double nominated for director, and Calhoun is nominated for Best Actress in a Lead mm. Role for Venison. Song. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it was definitely uh, surprising to see that many nominations coming mm -hmm. our way. It was very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Good. How long does it take you to, uh, to put a production together, a film, uh, from, say from start to finish? Because I'm, I'm sure you've got, mm -hmm. you budget your time, of course. Yeah. So you've got an estimate of what, uh, what it's going to be, how yeah. long? There, there's some variables, but writing a script can take a month and it can take a year. So you never know how long that process will take. So that one you can kind of take out of the equation because you, you just never know how that one's going to work. We usually like a pro-production of two months. Uh, uh, and then production we've done as short as six weeks and as long as 12 weeks. Uh, we don't shoot consecutively. Uh, Often in Michigan, we have actors that have day jobs and they, they got to go to work on Monday through Friday. So right. we've been shooting a lot on the weekends. Uh, now with us trying to be a little bit more like uh, a Hollywood production, we're trying to up our shooting schedule a little bit. Uh, so we're, our next film, we're actually trying to shoot it in three weeks. Um, so that's the, 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 the wiggle that's room, the three weeks to, to two months, efficient. yes. And, and the reason that you want to shoot it quickly is because people change. I mean, hair changes, makeup changes, you get a zit that you didn't have the day before. Like, all these things happen all the time. And you can have great makeup artists and everything else, but, but you just get a little bit off. And when you're watching the film, you don't know why, but it just doesn't feel right. Uh, so, so it's important to squeeze, uh, to squeeze a, a, a production schedule down. Also, from an acting perspective, when you're in it, you're really mm -hmm. in it. And, and you don't come out for weeks at a time and then get to go back again. So that's uh, another place that it, that is really good for. After that, the movie goes into post-production. So that's when the director uh, essentially directs the editor instead of the, the cast and crew. And that process first with the editor takes two months probably to get a, a, a nice cut down. And then after that, uh, then it has to get color graded and color corrected. Uh, we have to get all the uh, special effects in, so you know the, the demons aren't really demons. They don't have red or black eyes, so all these things have to be inserted afterwards. Um, and then after that, we have to send it to our audio team, which it happens to be in India, uh, and our audio guys, Kaizad and, and Feroz uh, Patel, great great uh, s talented, musicians, talented, talented. very talented, and they do the sound design for the whole thing. So when you see a person blow their nose in a movie, um, it, most of the time it's not the actual sound of the person blowing their nose. They have sounds that in films sound like someone blowing their nose, because if you heard the real thing, it might actually make you feel like it wasn't real. It's a, there's a lot of things that the sound gets replaced by mm -hmm. a fake sound that sounds more real than the real sound, which is really fascinating stuff that I never knew. But mm -hmm. like when you flip mm -hmm. a page and stuff like that, rarely ever the actual sound of the paper. Uh, so somebody goes in and, 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 and makes sure all that sound is perfect. 
And then on top of that, there's the score that kind of helps uh, tell the mood of the film. Um, and that takes two months. And then after that, you have a film that's complete and now starts the, the, the hardest part, which is um, getting it to festivals and making sure that it's seen, that it draws an audience, that it gets some rewards, uh, so that by the time the distributor releases it, we already have a bit of an audience that's, yeah, I want to see that. Uh, they've already spread the word about it. So these festivals like N Motor City Nightmares uh, and the Eclipse Awards and all these things, that's where people find out about the film and then um, you know, hopefully seek it out and, and word of mouth um, is a powerful tool. Okay. Year turnaround? Yeah. yeah. Probably. Yeah. From, uh, we wrapped uh, Ben and Song Holiday. Uh, January. January. We started it in October, really, pre-production. Um, well, September. September, September. pre-production. We started in September. That'll be the, one of the fastest turnarounds because... Because mm -hmm. um, the holiday movie, we can't really release movie, it in we February. Can't release it. Yeah, <laughs> we got to get it done and out. Yeah. So, um, so from the time we started pre-production until the time it's out, will be about a year, and that's really fast. Mm -hmm. Abeyance, that's same fast. thing. Yeah. Abeyance, actually, right now, we're <laughs> hustling to have that ready for Cannes. Uh, so uh, it's going to be screening with Vision, uh, I believe it's Vision Sony, same thing as Betrayed, and uh, it's going to be screening uh, with them in Cannes, which we have to have it ready. Yeah. So that's always fun. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Right. Uh, do we have anything else? We talked about Enigma briefly, that's the film that's coming out also in September. September's going to be a crazy month, I think we're all going to lose our minds in September. Yeah. Oh, Agramont's Gate. We played the we played the trailer for that. Yeah. Right. We didn't play the trailer for Betrayed. Oh, we haven't played that. Yeah, that's so far oh, been. Yeah. yeah, that's so far been our and our biggest seller so far. Yeah. Mm, that was a fun this song. has been uh, still. This trailer still kind of take my breath away. We really need to go. It's late and whatever, dude. Don't worry about it. <laughs> They found another body in the dumpster. Getting bad out there. This moment, we have no more information. Help me, please, please. My daughter's best friend is missing. I've activated a task force. Three young teenagers were abducted by you thugs. The chief and I were taking too much heat because you didn't keep your promise. Mr. Mayor, are you aware of any ties? There's no evidence of any of our donors being associated abductions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to shut down the Russians. The mayor has asked that I not do business with you anymore. Oh, my God. Did you get any messages from my daughter this morning? Well, she just vanished. I don't like this. I think the Russians took her. I can get all kinds of money, please. You don't need to do this. Now what these animals do to girls? Just find her. Detroit, not Chicago. I am not going down with you. You can't have the cartel and the Russians both picking our girls up on four streets. Love that trailer. That's actually the only trailer that we haven't cut with our own editor. The people from the distribution company said, you have such an amazing cast on this one, I want to make a, a, a trailer that's going to really set this on the map. And a shout out to Lake Orion Police Department. Yeah. yeah. Big yes. time. <laughs> they were a very big part of that one. Yeah. Very big part of that film. Um, so yeah, what else do we have to? Oh, somebody, some I, we couldn't really hear what there. Somebody asked about locations earlier, and um, I'm not sure exactly what you were asking about. One thing I wanted to say to any like filmmakers that uh, kind of up and coming filmmakers that are that are out there, I kind of oh. talked about like how amazed I am by how much people say yes. Um, I just want to give you kind of a, a caution too. It's like one of the reasons why people say yes to us is like we make sure that we leave a place exactly how we found it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We have great references because we do that. We have a lot of people that, in, mm -hmm. that invite us back, but you gotta have insurance, and that's one of the things that a, a lot of people cut, a lot of filmmakers cut corners on, is, is that 
you got to have insurance to walk in the door because you never know what's. I mean, thankfully mm -hmm. we haven't had a claim, um, but you never know what's gonna what's gonna happen and. Yeah to step into somebody's business or into somebody's home and not give them that that yeah. protection it's like that's that's the reason a lot of people are going to say yeah. going to say no and it's it's definitely something worthwhile it definitely is going to up the production values on everything you you do to to get yourself to take that step so. just respect the space that you borrow yeah. yes way beyond anything that you like just be super yeah. Good with it. That's, That's one of the things I tell our crews, our cast, and everything from the start is like, if you do anything, do not hide it. If you spill something, if you accidentally you bump into something or whatever, don't go, oops, and like hide something. It's like, please come and tell me. You're not mm -hmm. going to not work with this again. You're not going to get fired. <laughs> it's just going to allow me to fix the problem or ameliorate it with the with the homeowner or be able to go to them and say, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this happened. Broke the glass. Do we need to replace or, yeah. this? Do we need to you know fix it mm -hmm. do we need to you know we have had a couple of issues where some you know not much but we've had a couple of things that we've had to you know pay to replace or fix so yep. it's all been minor stuff but mm -hmm. um one thing I will say happen. one thing I will say too about most of these locations is that we have built relationships with all these people so when you do have something that happens it's not just affecting us from using the home or this private place because most of these are people that we have mm -hmm known from the past or whatever that have been willing to you know say hey we would love to be a part of this um, it, <coughs> most of them are very accommodating I mean they go above and beyond for us in ways that we're just like blown away yeah. um, but it's so important that you keep those relationships like good you don't want to find yourself in situations where you know mm -hmm. something happens and it wrecks Mm -hmm. Not just yeah. us using yeah. the location, but the relationship. I would, well, I would say at least <laughs> on a weekly basis, I have had, I have people that will tag me in Facebook things saying, "Hey, I need a hospital, or mm -hmm. I need a you know tricky to find location," and somebody will tag. It's like, oh, Nancy knows everything. Nancy mm -hmm. has all kinds mm -hmm. of locations. She's your yeah. your person, and it's like I don't. I I will mentor and help. All of us are the yeah. same way. Mm -hmm. Mentor and help young up and coming filmmakers in every way we possibly mm -hmm. can any moment of the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the one thing unfortunately I have learned that I don't do is yeah. I don't I don't share locations for the most part. I can't. Or vouching for people is dangerous vouching. too. Yeah, yes. because if I share a location, mm -hmm. um, not only do I risk that location because one person on if I'm not there and one person on your crew does something, hides something or whatever, mm -hmm. not only do I risk losing that location mm -hmm. for the future but mm -hmm. maybe they were referred to me by this person who mm -hmm. was referred yeah. to me by that person mm -hmm. and it's a domino effect and I not mm -hmm. only lose that one but I lose these three other locations too yeah. or I lose you know I've worked yeah. really hard to build relationships there's actually organizations that I'm like on the board of directors for and organizations that I volunteer for and to you know to work hard to keep you mm -hmm. know to give back to be able to keep those relationships healthy and yeah. to be a part of those communities and um, unfortunately I I'm not big. That's one area yeah. in my life I'm not big on sharing. Well, I think th I think what what but the thing is that we're happy to help anybody else that's getting started or that wants to do something like this. But 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 this is not like a fun hobby for us. This yeah. We're, yeah. We're, this is way beyond that. So what we're trying to do is is to run it very very professionally. And uh, unfortunately, there is a shortage of that in in Michigan. So to share something could end up being very, very costly. So mentoring is definitely something better. And uh, and I think, uh, you know, we've developed a lot of best practices over the years mm -hmm. that makes us very uh, capable of doing so. And, and I think we're both, we're all uh, pretty gracious with our time when we have it yes. uh, in helping uh, people get to where they want to go. Definitely. Yeah, Facebook has a question. Oh, cool. <laughs> Andrew Bigger asks, what's the hardest part of creating a film? Which part is harder than all the rest? Raising money. Money. Yeah, money. Raising money, yeah. <laughs> money is always. Yeah, I, I Do mean, I have anything else? Yeah, yeah, I'd like I mean, to join our investment team. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and the, the, the catch with this is that we're growing and growing, mm -hmm. yeah. which means the budgets are growing They're and growing. bigger and bigger. Yeah. So because of that, we're, it's like we're always chasing our own tail. So budget building is definitely the biggest challenge, um, no doubt about it. If you're thinking on the creative side, I think the most stress 
is Hollywood weekends. Mm -hmm. Because when yes. we have Hollywood people coming in, we've had very aggressive schedules, which is the least of the, my concerns, but you, you only have them for that time. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, when we had uh, Tom Sizemore, and I'm not gonna disclose uh, <laughs> any of the details, <laughs> but we had a packed schedule that, that weekend. And what happens is, you have to capture it all. So if you have an outdoor scene and it didn't rain in the scene that connects to it, it can't rain now. Mm -hmm. And you can't reschedule it. And, and we've had where we stood there and go, please just stop for one hour. <laughs> and, and so far we've been blessed enough to be able mm -hmm. to go to the other side. But that can be incredibly stressful. And, and, and you also, you keep looking at your audio guy and you're like, you have to capture this because there's mm -hmm. no ADR. Right. Yeah. I can't have them go to a studio in, in LA charging their prices to fix our ADR. Uh, so that's stressful. I look at my DP, make sure your frame rates are right, make sure we have focus, because you, you can't go back you and fix it. it. it, it I mean, Unfortunately, it, it, we've been, we've, I think oh we've only God. ever lost like We lost this your much. Scene. We lost, <laughs> yes. we lost yeah. your yeah. one scene. <laughs> and the, <laughs> so and one the movie scene that she only had one, more. yeah, she only yeah. had one scene in the film, which <laughs> is yeah. pretty rare, and, and <laughs> that one scene was the one where we, somebody And it wasn't even, and most of the scene is okay. It's just mm -hmm. the one, the one The part. first yeah. half, yeah. which is where you're <laughs> like, in. Yeah. Uh, that one so ended good. up getting on the chopping because yeah. uh, we had the wrong frame rate set on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I will say too, with those Hollywood talent weekends, um, the people who are involved with this in the scenes with the Hollywood talent, they mm. have to be on their A game. Mm. Oh, yeah. They uh, have, because here's the thing, most of the actors are in multiple scenes with these Hollywood actors. So they have to make sure their emotions are uh, in check. Like, <laughs> all right, well, I need to be here and then I have to go up here and then I have to find myself way back down here and I have to work on what they are able to give me mm -hmm. and they don't have like as much time with us as they would with a bigger production because mm -hmm. we right. just don't have that time. And, and we have and table reads and mm -hmm. other things before no. we shoot so so they're very prepared but if but, but it doesn't matter how prepared you are, mm -hmm. if then they come in and they play it very differently, yes. you have to adapt right on the yes. spot to that, and you have to figure out a way to make that work, uh, because, right. again, And the, the reason those, a, those schedules schedule. have to be so aggressive is that it when you're, they cost yeah. a lot of money. So when you're bringing somebody in, it's like you're paying a certain amount per day. It's like you can't like shoot a number of scenes with, you know, Corbin Burnson and say, okay, you take a rest, Corbin. We're going to go over here and we're going to shoot some scenes with, with Katie and Calhoun and you go take a rest. Mm -hmm. No, when Corbin's there, he's in every scene. Yep. yep. And we've got to maximize his day. Yes. It's like, yes. you're going to go here and you're going to shoot this and it's like, then you're going to get a little rest while we go and move over here to this location and, you know, it's like his day is going to be packed and then, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to give him the, the minimum allowable space between <laughs> <laughs> the next day <laughs> down to the wire and then we're going to shoot out the next day. So if he's in for three days, then he's going to be Working maxed out three for three days, days yeah. which is, mm -hmm. you know, once, you, especially when you're dealing with actors that are, you know, Corbin and Dennis that are a little bit, you know, that are over the age of 50, it's like you, you have to like, sometimes you have to take a breath and say, okay, maybe we can't push them the way that we can an actor that's 20 or 20 or 30. And, um, but you still have to try to maximize the amount of time that when mm -hmm. you when you have them there and you you can't I really think have they hiccups. have done amazing yeah they've done an amazing job and I we mean, had we I did have a hiccup with um, and Tom Sizemore like wrote it out with us we had something happen that we've never happened on happened on another film yeah. we lost a location the day we were shooting we showed up and somebody else at a location mm -hmm. that we were supposed to be shooting at we had unload fully unloaded all of our gear we had started setting up mm -hmm. and somebody was was who was in charge of that building was not the person that we had been dealing with he was the guy in charge on the weekends and he was just like nope 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 nobody ever talked to me about it yeah. i'm going to call corporate and the other guy had just said yeah 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 no worries Pivotal scene. he had signed you off on it, it. Yes. yeah you couldn't get around it and it was it was a it was her scene <laughs> it was my <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was our scene. So team. we were literally downtown, which was like, I have a million location connections up in the suburbs, but not downtown. Mm -hmm. And we had, we had to find a, favor. a coffee house 
that was yesterday. not open so that we could control <laughs> sound, but that we could reach the owner of to be able to get us in on, you know, and it was like, it was insane. Yeah. It was like, we ended up shooting in the VIP lounge of a nightclub that we quickly staged to look, yes. and the guy that I called wasn't even in town. Mm -hmm. He's called his brother-in-law who lived 45 minutes away to meet us over there and get me the key and unlock the place for me. And, the, uh, and he's this. a filmmaker himself, yes. which is why he understood how important yeah. it was. So he yeah. saved us and, and uh, we definitely owe, we, yeah. just, we still gotta save him back yeah. at some point. I know. <laughs> well, and when and I've yeah, I've done some favors, but yeah. it, but um, thank you, Dennis Reed. <laughs> <laughs> He's like brother, love you. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, but that we started four hours. We started filming four hours later mm -hmm. than we were supposed to, on a day where we had like turns and stuff like yeah. that. And God bless him, Tom Sizemore. Yeah, could what have, a rock he would have been fully within his rights at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> to say, guys, I was supposed to be done, done. two hours ago yeah. when we had like a you know a big climax scene left to shoot, and mm -hmm. God bless him, he not only yeah. stuck with he us, went he fell asleep in a chair mm -hmm. at one point. He fell yeah. asleep between takes. I'll tell you this: though, yeah. watch, watch, watch his performance in that film. He's he's oh my gosh, he's brilliant. absolutely breathtaking. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, I mean, he he's just, I think he's the most electric person that we have ever had in on screen. It's I mean, amazing. I. Corbin was really, really good, and we have had a, a lot of other people that I love, but Tom's just something special. He can do something so tiny, yeah. and it just reads so strong on camera, and it's <coughs> it's amazing. And the guy's got screen presence galore. He looks so like different. John in Savage is the same way. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. John Savage and has that thing too. They just love being there, even when yes. they're not filming. And, yeah. You know, while we're yes. setting up and getting, you know, going yeah. to different locations. They just thoroughly Still like love. love every moment that they're with us. And Hang out with us, talk with us, get to know that's us. That's what's amazing. Football with us, yeah. football, yeah. With us. football, throwing the football, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a dance lot of fun. with us. We can yeah. <laughs> a few yeah. dance routines oh, in between yeah. takes. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you bring in Hollywood talent, mm -hmm. um, are their expenses all on you? You're making all the arrangements where they're staying, mm -hmm. meals, everything. What, what often what they ride from their house to the airport in LA usually, uh, to the airport, to the flight, to the ride here, to the hotel, uh, uh, to the food, to, to the food, to the ice cream, ice cream, to the <laughs> ice cream, <laughs> yep. snacks. To the, to, the, to the, I'm on my way back to set with, with your wondering, you know what, I've decided I'm going to have an espresso instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So summer, that doesn't, but, but it's Cook's like, Dairy. I'm. Huh? Summertime at Cook's Dairy. For ice right, cream. right, right, right. Yeah. 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 But it's, you know, you don't, with the budgets that we have, we don't have a lot of fluff. And that's yeah. one of the things you have to get accustomed to is that if they're, you're used to working on bigger budget films, you're used to not having to watch those things. And we did have a situation with one Hollywood um, actor that uh, decided to change their flight home and didn't tell us and mm -hmm. so and didn't inform the limo company that was picking them up to take them home. So we got charged double sure. for the, the limo mm -hmm. company and that was and decided to sign off on a very generous tip. Yeah. With, <laughs> with, with our money. With our money. Yes. <laughs> with our money. So so that was a no, that was like two hundred dollars that we didn't mm -hmm. have budgeted. And it's like, you know, we And we are already flipping the coins mm -hmm. a few times. Yeah. So it's yeah. like that's one of the things you learn it's like with that you have to anticipate with Hollywood talent is that you 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 have to not go crazy, but you have to expect some unexpected. A little bit of unexpected and mm -hmm. just roll with it. Because honestly, if you say, no, 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 you know, it's like, uh, you know, don't, oh, don't worry about that. I'm just going to, I'm just going to sign off on that midnight room service thing, even though we've already given you a per diem. That, that little 30 thing that you pay for means it's like you treated them really well and they not mm -hmm. only want to come back, but it's like you've, you've really helped solidify that relationship. So if you don't, that's where you don't want to sweat the pennies. No. You know, you really want to treat them well and make yeah. them. And yes. have them not think that you're counting that you're counting pennies. Yeah, and for any aspiring filmmakers, if you wonder, well, with all these problems, with all this cost, why do you have them? And that's really, really simple. If you don't have them, there is no audience. 
And now you have to gain that audience from scratch based on unknown actors that nobody's ever seen. There's a million movies out there with people that they've seen over and over again that they love. So without them, the film drowns and never goes anywhere. That's the case 99.9% .9 of the time. So what we're trying to do is stack the odds and bring in really, really talented people that provide an immediate audience mm -hmm. to the film. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of like the thing. And, and we've been really blessed with working through connections to find the very right people for roles. Um, and that's why a lot of them come back. I mean, mm -hmm. we've virtually had everybody come back for multiple films that's been around. And if they haven't been back, they w probably will be. Mm -hmm. um, that's the kind of relationships we've had so far. But yeah, they're absolutely essential to your film having uh, an audience. Uh, somebody asked, said something uh, on a post one time on Facebook, and they said something like, I will never give away you know, my role to some Hollywood has been or something like that. Uh, I'm gonna give that to Michigan actors. And I was like, your Michigan actors are never gonna get seen in your movie. You have a 0.01% chance of the film going anywhere. And, and, and you'd want your Michigan actors to be seen. And that's what that Hollywood name or two or three or six uh, provides a, an immediate audience that's gonna come watch the film. And that's uh, pretty clear so far. Betrayed so far has been our, our biggest hit. And uh, that's the ensemble cast uh, mm -hmm. with, right. with all the people that, yeah. that provided us an immediate audience. And mm -hmm. that's the one that got picked up by, by Sony, which mm -hmm. clearly the, the, everything worked in favor of, of what we did. Mm -hmm. And the Michigan actors in that film have been seen a lot more than they would have been if they weren't a part of it. You know, and, and since you're talking, because we were just talking about Hollywood actors, let's talk about the Michigan actors. We have a really good, well, we have a system in place that has shown us time and time again to work. Yeah. Um, Gotta give a shout some... out to, to Jerry, actually. <laughs> uh, Jerry is actually, the Jerry Hayes co-directed uh, Moving Parts with me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the original system for how we pick our cast actually came from him. Mm -hmm. So we pretty much based it, based it on uh, uh, screen presence, which means pretty much if the camera loves you or not. There are some people that look amazing and then they step in front of a camera and you go, whoa. <laughs> um, and then there are some people that might not look that great and they step in front of a camera and you go, wow. <laughs> Um, a and we've had a few. Those. We're not going to talk about specifically <laughs> no, who. I'm not in the first category. So <laughs> yes. I get on here and I'm like, oh my gosh, is that really what I look like? <laughs> <laughs> right. oh. Wow. <laughs> that won't, once so, we get our new body, so, so that scre that. screen presence is really important. We're going to fight over kids. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then the next category is fit. So if I'm going to be playing a 22-year-old pregnant lady. <laughs> That's not going to work. I don't fit. Okay? So we have to find the best possible fit. So we have to, so we that's the, the second criteria. Yeah, I, I'm getting I'm getting there. But uh <laughs> no, we own yeah. we own one. We have we one do in have inventory one. now. So. I have I built in one. Mine was more expensive. <laughs> right, guys. Um, and then the last portion is truth. So uh, that means that when you say that you are who you say you are when you're in the film, if I don't believe you, then, you, then you're clearly not right for the role. Mm -hmm. And you can have a really good actor not be truthful for a specific role um, uh, because they maybe they don't like the role, maybe they judge the role. There's a lot of things that can happen uh, that would make them not fit. But So we use those three criteria uh, in order to cast. And, uh, and I've learned now that that's actually the old way Hollywood used to cast until they started valuing your Instagram following and everything else mm. more than, than actual talent and truth and mm. craft and everything else. Um, so we're hoping by doing this and getting hopefully this right to get a bit of, of a rising of the indie film becoming um, maybe what the Hollywood films used to be. Um, there's some amazing talent in Michigan mm -hmm. and one of the things that we always do is um, up until this next film that we're doing, because mm -hmm. we just we, we have, have like eleven an roles. impossible turnover 
with a really small cast for yeah. our next film. We just don't have the time to open it up. But um, up until now, we've always had open casting, which a, a lot of other filmmakers are always surprised by that we take the time to mm -hmm. see what is typically four and 500 submissions, mm -hmm. sometimes even more, um, for a lot of our roles. But one of the reasons I think that's important, um, and this, is, this goes out to all of the actors out there, yeah. is that there are always new people coming into this. I think I know everybody in Michigan film. I get mm -hmm. asked to help uh, cast for other directors and stuff sometime. And I read a script sometimes and I go, I know, who want, I know who's gonna play 90% of these roles in my head, right off the bat, mm -hmm. who my first choices would be. Um, but then those, there's those other 10%. But then we walk into casting mm -hmm. and then Someone somebody walks in the away. room <laughs> and they totally <laughs> surprise you. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes there's a domino effect. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes you go, oh my gosh, well, if this person is playing this person, then this person doesn't really match with this person as their husband, daughter, spouse, lover, whatever. Um, if this person is this age or this person is this height, sometimes mm -hmm. height, height is a factor. Yep. Yep. Um, I had people that have and come width. up to me and said, <laughs> yeah, I've had, I've had people come up to me and say, um, uh, I was really surprised I didn't get a role. I've worked with you guys and I thought, you know, and it's like, keep auditioning. It's just, sometimes yeah. it's, sometimes we it's We had somebody fit. on Abeyance that has auditioned for almost every film yeah. that actually said, I just want to know if you want me to keep auditioning because mm -hmm. I haven't gotten anything so far. Yeah. So really, really good actor right. that he was almost thinking maybe we didn't like him. And then he was one of the main characters. Yeah. His one and only role with us so far was one of the main characters in uh, the in Abeyance, mm -hmm. and uh, and he was really surprised. But we do take our casting incredibly serious. One of our uh, leads in Abeyance was somebody we'd never worked with before, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and we went into that thinking somebody else was going to be in that role, and yeah. she came in and blew us away. Yeah. And there are people that don't come. I think there are people that have not come back because they think yeah, if they don't get personal. roles from us three no. or four it's times, not no. it's not And I don't personal. care what clique you're from. Yes, I don't care. <laughs> I want to know <laughs> how awesome you are. I want to see you as the character. That's what yes. we all want. Yeah. I don't care who you're affiliated and with or whatever. All those games are for the playground, not for yeah. a professional movie set. No. And yeah. with that, too, we have had some actors who have blown us away, but because of one of the three factors of, you know, the fit, screen presence, and, you know, the truth, um, they just didn't get it. And it's like, oh, like you were, um, and, and here's the thing, it's, it's it, I think as a casting director, it's it's sad. It, it does sadden you because you know that oh they They're did such so an amazing job. Right. I just I just know that they just can't they can't do it. We have mm -hmm. this and this collides with that. If mm -hmm. you know the domino effect, the like you said, the whole domino effect, yeah. and then you don't see another audition yeah, from them on. because yeah. they have auditioned yeah. for you in the past. But speaking of that, we've actor, had the best audition for a character not get the part yes. at times because they didn't fit into the rest of mm -hmm. the mix. And by putting them in, we would have to change a bunch of other, and, and that would again make the film, in our opinion, not as strong. Right. Uh, so the best audition has at times gone um, uncast. Right. But we... But like, we remember you. Yes, we do remember absolutely. you, but... We absolutely Here's the thing, you. because we had already talked about this Harley wrote a s script based on an, an audition, audition that he didn't get the role that for. he did not get the role <laughs> for, and he I don't even was he even cast? Yeah, in that? he was. The he, was he was yeah. detective. Yes. yes, same thing. Law, Law and Order SVU. Callie auditioned for a little tiny feature part mm -hmm. in an episode of Law and Order SVU, and as happens with these big things and with anything, we don't have time to call everybody back up. No ourselves we never heard anything you didn't get it you're moving on like right. that happens all the time you don't right. if you're if you're a good production you don't have time to follow up with no. everybody you just don't yes. so you're not going to you're and not making a back. call saying you didn't get the role yeah. sucks yeah so i'd rather <laughs> yeah. not make it you, so you we get didn't it. hear anything and then all of a sudden the week before we were supposed to be shooting starting Bennett, Bennett song Holiday, holiday yeah. which she's the lead in <laughs> we get a call from law and order svu <laughs> saying uh, yeah, we have this other role um, that we would like her to read for by tomorrow. And we're like, well, she's really, she's getting ready to do a lead in a film. And it's like, you know, 
and her manager was like, you got to see this. And I've read it and I was just like, oh my gosh. And I was like, you need to see yeah, this. I almost didn't do it. And I she was, was like, like, no, no, no. I'm I got, so I've got to prep for this character. role. I was like, and it's like, you just need to read this. And she read it. She's like, I have to have this role. <laughs> and um, she like, she got it and she literally shot that in New York two days before she started Bennett Song Holiday. And, um, but it was, and it was a amazing guest star role. And it, they saw her. They, she didn't get the feature mm -hmm. because they saw her, loved her, but they had something bigger in mind. Yeah. And they ended up calling us a month mm -hmm. and a half later mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. a bigger role. Yeah. So you never know. Yeah. Keep showing up. Always <laughs> Keep auditioning. Keep auditioning. And, and when you don't get the role, I can bet you 99% of the times, even with other production companies, no. it's not personal. No. It's, it's, I think every actor should sit in on a casting of some kind, mm -hmm. I think that should be required in acting classes mm -hmm. so that they can understand that, yeah, yeah I really wanted to cast her, but the guy that we are casting to be the lead is two inches shorter than her. Now we're gonna have to walk around the whole film with you know, Tom cruising this guy, <laughs> and and, 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 and uh, yes, <laughs> so so but 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 so so that's a very complicated thing to do. It's easier to just adjust the 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 the, the casting. Um, so so yeah, uh, always audition, audition, audition. Uh, so many quotes of, of these. Um, yeah, we had we've had that happen before too, where somebody comes in the room and you go. Yeah. You're not expecting a lot because you've seen this person audition three mm -hmm. times before and they surprise you and it's like, yep. you know, and they walk out of the room and we literally look at each other and go, somebody's been working on their craft. Yeah. And yeah. It's like, you know, and, and sometimes with, with that, it's like, mm -hmm. we've had one of those I can think of in my head right yeah. now where, and I don't, I don't want to say who it is because yeah. the first three auditions had not been great, mm -hmm. um, but uh, where we said somebody's working on their craft and when it came down to the decision mm -hmm. and it was down between him and somebody else, it's like, you know what? Let's give you know he's really been mm -hmm. working. I want to give this guy a shot. Yep. Like he kept mm -hmm. showing up. He kept to coming yeah. in. Yes. He he really has been working mm -hmm. at this. It's mm -hmm. like I really I want to reward that. Yep. So. Yeah. And if you can't make a casting call, you can always ask if you can send an audition in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if we're open to that, which most of the time we yeah. are, yeah. always um, always open to that. Then you know don't don't look at that as a deterrent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if the date doesn't work for you at the yeah. time. I think oh, uh, I think we should wrap it up. So I think what we yeah. do is we 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 wrap up with. Uh, the Enigma trailer, and mm -hmm. then we, uh, we call it a night. Yeah. So Enigma is going to be available in September, um, and uh, this was another one of them fun, fun movies. Tonight. What the hell? Is this the red away? We found the same drawing all over Randy's place. It's two in a month, five this year. Let's say it is a call. Who's the leader? Couldn't find anything on the call. Not even anyone with ties. Best I could do is a couple of local priests who are willing to talk. This is the sign of the fallen angel man. It causes death and destruction. Angels and demons? Please don't tell me you believe that too. He is very real. The greatest lie ever told is that the devil and his demons do not exist. But believe me, he is very real. I just don't believe in this sort of stuff. We need progress. This is some cult figure, whatever. I want him to custody as soon as possible. Let's find this guy. I got a feeling the clock is doing it. Just a matter of time before the body shows up. We're losing our grip in our own town. There is a war for your soul. Let's fight now. Get your damn strong. Well, I got chills. I think we're gonna call that the the night. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we uh, we are Paint Creek Productions, Auburn Moon, and Summer Productions. Summer Productions, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess we are out. Mm -hmm.